Hey everybody, with this chapter we're going to be doing uh, chapter 10 and 11, the female and the male reproductive systems together. The homework and the test will be due on the 1st of May, and then you will notice that you will have comprehensive tests that are going to be due on the 6th, so watch for those due dates on that, and then after that we will be done. Um, starting with the female reproductive system, it is designed to produce the female egg cell, which is also called the ova, or ovum if it's um, plural. So, and it also secretes hormones that are necessary for reproduction. The female reproductive system also includes the transportation system for fertilization and the implementation of the ova into the walls of the uterus. The organs for the repro uh, female reproductive system include the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and here's my ovary right there, and the fallopian tube is right there, and the uterus and the vagina, and um, also includes the breast as well, which it doesn't show that. Um, the ovaries, again, here's my ovary. It's also called the female gonads, or a pair of small, oval-shaped glands within the pelvic cavity. So your ovaries are responsible for the production of the ovum, or also called the egg. The ovaries are also responsible for the secretion of the hormones of estrogen and progesterone. So begin, that usually begins at puberty. Each month, a mature ovum ruptures uh, through the ovarian cortex, which is this portion right there. This is the outer wall of the ovary, and um, is discharged into the pelvic cavity, where it's going to enter into, it's got this fimbrae um, of the fallopian tube. It's going to sweep in, it's going to try and sweep that um, egg into the fallopian tube, um, where it's going to enter the fallopian tube. And in most women, the ovary um, alternates um, both because you have two ovaries, it's going to alternate each month when it releases that ovum, um, which is also called ovulation. Um, within the ovaries, we call them the sex cells, or also called the gametes. Um, the ovary itself, I'm going to switch here. Here it shows you the ovary, uh, or it just says here ovary. Um, the ovary is going to release that egg, and it's going to go through the uterine tube, which is also called the fallopian tube. And then um, the, if it's fertilized in the fallopian tube, or it may not get fertilized in the fallopian tube, but um, this is where the sperm would meet the um, egg is in the, fallo in the fallopian tube. Um, then it's going to go into the uterus where it's going to be implanted there. If it's not fertilized, it's going to be shed each month through menstruation. And if it's fertilized, then it's going to implant within the uterine wall. So again, the ovaries hold the eggs, and one egg is going to be released each month, and it's going to enter the fallopian tube, and it's eventually going to make its way down into the uterus. The egg, again, if it's fertilized, will implant into the wall of the uterus, uterus and if it's not fertilized it's going to be released through menstruation. Females are born with one to two million ovaries, or excuse me, ovaries, uh, ovarian follicles, um, which are large masses of cells that contain um, an immature female sex cell that we call oocyte. And the first menstruation we call our menses or the menarche, and then we have menses each month. And usually your menarche starts between the age of 10 to 14 years old. Menstruation is the periodic shedding of that thickening of the uterine well, lining when you're uh, lining each month. And when you're pregnant, that doesn't happen. Um, menstruation usually happens for 30 to 40 years. Menopause is what signals the end of menstruation or the, your childbearing years. Once the egg becomes fertilized in the fallopian tube, it moves by contractions that go down in the uterus. Once it's in the uterus, the fertilized ovum attaches onto the uterine wall where it's um, nourished for 40 weeks, which we call that gestation. If we talk about the uterus, which I'll show a picture of the uterus here. Oops, wrong one. Here's your uterus. The uterus is a muscular pear-shaped organ. The uterus has two sections. It has that fundus, which is the upper portion here, and it also has the body, and then it has the lower portion, which is the cervix down here. So um, during pregnancy, the placenta grows in, in the uterine wall right in here, in that inside of the uterine wall. The middle portion of the uterus is called the body, and then again, the lower portion is called the cervix. Um, the ways that we prevent pregnancy, we use contraceptions, different types 
would be like an IUD. Um, there's inner uterine, or excuse me, inner vaginal rings, condoms, spermicides, diaphragms, cervical cap, or sponge can all be used so that um, there's ways to prevent pregnancy. Um, diagnostic procedures, the gynecologist is the physician who diagnoses and treats disorders of the female reproductive system. Again, gyne means woman, so don't mix that up because there's an obstetrician, which that doctor diagnoses and treats pregnancy and um, delivers a childhood or childbirth. Um, an obstetrician can deliver for a normal pregnancy or um, a high risk pregnancy. Different other types of uh, tests, we have pap smears or pap tests. Those are psycho, uh, cytological screening tests used to detect the pre uh, presence or um, um, abnormality or if there's any type of cancer cells that are in the cervix or in the vagina. So that we call that a pap smear. And usually they start those at the age of 21 or if someone is sexually active before that date or if a woman is. A mammogram is where they use low-dose x-rays on the breast. There are two types. We have screening mammograms and we have diagnostic mammograms. A screening mammogram is done on an asymptomatic woman with no um, signs or symptoms or no problems with her breasts. And so she goes in for a screening. Usually we start those at um, between 40 and 50 years old on women and do those on a yearly basis. And then the other one is a diagnostic screening. Uh, mammogram where the woman maybe has felt a lump or a little um, has some dimpling or puckering or maybe the doctor has found something so we already have some idea that there's something wrong with the breast and we do a diagnostic mammogram instead with that in that case other types of tests a pregnancy test is usually done on blood or urine and it's we're trying to detect HCG where which is being secreted by the placenta. So if there is placenta, which is um, present when the when the woman is pregnant, um, usually a positive urine test usually will indicate that a woman is pregnant. Different types of complications during pregnancy. We have the ectopic pregnancy, um, which is the implantation of the egg outside of the uterus. Usually we see that in the fallopian tubes. Um, if that happens, the pregnancy cannot survive. It will either rupture or if they catch it soon enough, they will go in and take it out. Placenta previa, which is a condition where the placenta blocks the birth canal, usually requires a C-section for delivery. Stillbirth is just the birth of a dead child, um, can occur at, for many different reasons. A premature baby is one that's born before 30, 37 weeks gestation. Preeclampsia is just a severe complication of pregnancy. Um, the symptoms with the mom, should, you'll see that woman coming in with um, hypertension, proteinuria, which is protein that's spill, spilling over into the urine, which we don't normally want to see that, and edema. If this is left untreated, the preeclampsia can lead to eclampsia or toxemia, is the older word we used to use, which can turn fatal for the mother or possibly the baby as well. Treatment for preeclampsia is to stop the progression of the condition. Usually we put that mom on bed rest. Um, abnormalities of the female cycle, amenorrhea, which is A is without, so it's the absence of menstruation. Reasons for that would be pregnancy, menopause, um, maybe a woman that is very, very active or exercises a lot uh, would be a reason why they, the menstruation would stop. Or if there is extreme dieting, it is another reason why they would um, stop menstruating. Dysmenorrhea, dys means bad or, or um, painful, so it's painful menstruation. Menorrhagia, which is excessive menstrual bleeding. Again, rhagia means flow. Oligomenorrhagia uh, is light menstrual period. And metrorrhea is the bleeding that's between your periods. Um, different types of conditions that you can, um, that are STDs that you can get. Um, and again, STD stands for um, sexual transmitted diseases, and it is transmitted through sexual contact. Um, one of them is syphilis, which is an infectious disease that's treated with an antibiotic. And we're going to want to always treat both of our partners, because if you only treat one of the partners with an STD, it's just going to ping pong back and forth again if you don't treat both partners. Gonorrhea is just a contagious infection of the genital mucous membrane. 
and genital to herpes is another one that's a contagious reoccurring infection that you get and once you get genital herpes that one will um that one you can can uh it'll never go away but you can take medication to have fewer and fewer outbreaks chlamydia is a microorganism that can cause several stds surgical terms um, abortion is just the termination of your pregnancy that's prematurely um, amniocentesis is the puncture into the abdomen or excuse me am, amniotic sac for sampling of that fluid and usually we do that for certain reasons um, maybe a woman is older and she's pregnant and she wants to make sure that there's no complications with the baby um, I want to go to the next one talking about hysterectomies it's the removal of the uterus and the only reason we would remove the uterus is if we're having complications um, and having problems with our periods things like that or maybe there's endometriosis things that are going on with with the um, woman and her period so hysterectomy as the removal of the uterus there's two different ways we can do it abdominally where they cut a horizontal um, right above the pubic line there and then they remove the uterus that way the other way is vaginal hysterectomy where they go in with it with the instrument and they take the uterus out that way um, this is a um, this is done more probably more frequently now um, you'll have a faster recovery because again they're not making an incision line like they're doing here you have chance of infection here and with this way doing it this way you have um, less chance of infection and a faster recovery time oophorectomy is the removal of the ovaries so instead we're just taking out the ovaries and a uh, hysterectomy we're just taking out the uterus and a salpingotomy is the incision into the fallopian tubes and again we're going to go incising or cutting into the fallopian tubes probably for the reason of to take out an ectopic pregnancy and then there's the salping um, so you're taking out the fallopian tubes and the ovaries or you can do a hister salping oophorectomy where you're removing the, the uterus itself the ovaries and the fallopian tubes so it just depends some women have certain procedures done or you can have every the removal of everything again salping otomy is just make, making an incision so know your difference between ectomy and otomy and then there's mastectomy which is removal of a breast so that's your terms and um, a little bit history and um, about your anatomy on the female reproductive system.